the second video in our process costing series, we'll actually be looking at the computation of equivalent units. So there are three things we need to know when we're using process costing. We call these the building blocks of process costing. The first one is the fact that we're not going to distinguish between all three product costs, which are direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. In process costing, we really separate the three into two categories, the first one being direct materials, the second um, category being conversion cost. And recall that conversion costs are made up of your direct labor and your manufacturing overhead. We'll also need to know the idea of equivalent units, which we're going to talk about here in a second, as well as the inventory flow assumption that we are considering. We're going to focus on the weighted average inventory flow assumption um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is the easiest to use. Companies in the real world mainly use it. Um, first in, first out is a little more complicated, so it can be more costly. And the, the difference in the results is very negligible between the two. Uh, the only difference is how beginning inventory gets treated. So let's first look at um, the computation of equivalent units. So here I've, drew, I've given us a timeline to look at, and we can see that we're looking at golf balls. Um, and also we need to know that in process costing, typically we think of conversion cost as being added evenly throughout the process of the product. So as we can see here in blue, the conversion costs are added evenly throughout this process from beginning until the product is 100% complete. And if we look at materials, we have two different kinds of materials. We have rubber, which is added at the very beginning of the process, and we have packaging, which is added at the very end of the process. And we notice that the golf balls are 80% complete, or 5,000 of them are 80% complete at the end of the period that we're discussing. So what we see here is if rubber is added at the very beginning of the process, then they're all completed as to rubber. Rubber won't be added anymore during the process. However, packaging is not added until the very end of the process. So what we can derive from this information is that we have 5,000 equivalent units as to rubber because rubber has been completely added at the very beginning of the process. Packaging, however, is not added till the end of the process. If we're only 80% through the process, then none of the packaging has been added. Therefore, we have no equivalent units as to packaging materials. And we need to also compute equivalent units as to conversion cost. Well, if conversion costs are added evenly throughout the process, and we've got 5,000 golf balls that were started but not yet finished, and they're 80% complete, then 80% of 5,000 golf balls, we've got an equivalent of 4,000 that have been completed with the amount of costs that have been added. So let's look at an example that um, isn't really a product or a job, but colleges and universities use the equivalent unit concept to describe the number of faculty as well as the number of students. The University of Georgia has about 2,000 full-time faculty and 400 part-time faculty. Assume the following. Number one. A full-time faculty member teaches six courses per year. Number two, 100 part-time faculty teach three courses per year. So that would be our half-time faculty. And number three, we have 300 part-time faculty that teach two courses per year, though a, th a third full-time faculty. What is the full-time equivalent faculty, the number of equivalent units of faculty? So I'd like for you to think about this for a second. So push pause on your player. See if you can come up with a full-time equivalent faculty number for these three statistics here. So the first thing you would see is a full-time faculty is a full-time faculty. So um, 2,000 teach six out of six classes, making them a, a actual full-time faculty. So 2,000 are actual full-time faculty. In number two, we have 100 part-time faculty that teach three courses per year, which is actually exactly half of a full-time faculty. So in number two, we have 100 that teach three out of six courses because six would be a full-time faculty. So of the 100, those 100 half-time faculty equate to 50 full-time faculty. And in number three, our third full-time faculty, those 300 that teach two courses per year equate to 100 full-time faculty. 
So our full-time equivalent faculty of the 2,400 total faculty is 2,150 people.